What is going on, J Squad? I hope y'all are having a great day today. This video is going to be very different. I've never done this before. I'm sure some of you would like to know. So this is why I'm making a video of how I edit my videos. This is gonna be like an editing section because I'll be editing this video in this video. And then after I finish recording this video, I'll be editing this video about teaching y'all how I edit my videos. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? By the way, this won't be a very long tutorial. I know some people don't like to sit past videos that are 10 plus minutes long when you're trying to learn something quick. Trust me, I know the same feeling, so I'm gonna try my best to make this video under 10 minutes long. Now, most of my friends know, but I know some of you watching do not know I edit with Sony Vegas 16. I'm sorry, Premiere Pro users. It's just not my thing. I don't like Premiere. I edit with Sony Vegas for my normal videos and I edit with After Effects for my actual serious projects. And to be nice to you all, I will be putting timestamps in the description of the video just in case y'all want to skip to a certain part of the tutorial. And hey, before the video starts, I just want to thank you all for 20,000 subscribers. 20,000? That is crazy. Just in October, I was at 300. I cannot thank you all so much for hitting this milestone. We did this together, okay? Without you all, the J Squad, I wouldn't be in this position. So thank you all so much. I love you all. And let's keep on going. The next milestone is 50K and then 100K. We're gonna keep going. We're not stopping here. The first thing I do before I actually edit the video, which should be the first thing everyone else is doing if you're watching this video, is importing the clips. Okay, so I'm going to use the footage from my VR chat video. And before I even drag this clip down, here's a tip. Do not go to your files, grab the clip from here and just drag it into your timeline that can lead to your video crashing so just don't do that we're gonna delete that always make sure you're dragging your clips in from the actual software itself i'm gonna drag this clip down and it always asks if you want to set your project video settings to match the media you can if you want to you don't have to in my case i'm going to and now you see my footage and these three tracks the first one is obviously the video track the second one is my desktop audio which would be the game audio and the third track is my microphone audio if you want to know how i do that it's because i record with two separate audio tracks in obs and that's why it lets me split up the audio when i start editing just in case i want to lower the volume of my microphone i can do that like this or if i want to lower or up the volume of the gameplay i can do it on that separate track as well and now here is one of the most important steps if you're a vegas user okay you want to right click on your footage now that's just the footage track you go to properties, you see where it says use project resample mode, disable resample, press OK. Always do that first. As soon as you drag the clip into your timeline, disable resample. That goes for literally any clip you use in your video. That could be a text layer. It could be a video that you downloaded from YouTube and put in. Always disable resample before you do anything else. Otherwise, the mess will look pretty trash when you render it. That goes for clip hitters as well. If you're sending some clips over to an editor, always disable the resample before you send it to them please okay they will greatly appreciate it now y'all may be wondering why my preview screen looks like this that's only because it's how it looks when i'm actually recording my video the main way to fix this you're gonna want to go to file and then properties just simply change this back to 1920 and apply now you're gonna see this and it looks weird okay we're about to fix it again you're gonna right click on your track go to properties uncheck maintain aspect ratio and now we're going to go to the pan and crop tool which is this little icon right here and we're going to change the width to 1920 alrighty and now we're going to go to the x center and change that to 960 boom now you have one of the layers completely on your face cam now you may be wondering well how am i going to show the gameplay simple as well first if you need to separate tracks a quick shortcut is just pressing u on your keyboard and now it's separated you can do that to any track as well if you need to and what we're going to do is right click and duplicate this track now we have two of the same track all you're going to do now is go back to the pan and crop tool and move this over until you get to the gameplay screen i'm using my right arrow key by the way to do this and the right number to get this perfectly in the center just change your x center to 2880 and you can type this in if you need to just press enter afterwards Alrighty, so now we have two tracks 
one is the webcam and one is the gameplay if you need to see a separate layer you can press this m right here it's a mute and that's basically hiding the track now you see the webcam and there's that now let's talk about how i position my webcam and if you ever want to resize it put a border around it this is that part so first i'm going to put my webcam layer on top of my gameplay layer now we're going to go back to the pan and crop tool you want to click on this icon this is the aspect ratio because if you don't when you're resizing it'll just look all wonky you don't want to do that okay so just press ctrl z to undo and now we're going to check this icon and now when you resize it it'll stay together all right and i also go to the masking section make sure you check the box so you can see it as you do it because if you do not then when you try to resize your webcam it's still going to show the gameplay so you're going to want to make a rectangle around that area if you need to use your scroll wheel to zoom in so you can get the right dimensions on your rectangle now that we have that set when you resize this boom it's just your webcam by itself look at that magic just for the purpose of this video i'm going to keep it as a rectangle shape if you want to make it to where as i had it in that vr chat video you're just going to mess with the mask again and as you see i'm like moving the sides to make it more like a square or a, another rectangle shape that's all you have to do i'll put this in the top left corner because i'm keeping my current webcam in the top right corner and usually y'all before i even start the cutting this is where i put the border around my webcam because when you see in my videos where i put it in full screen you won't see the border regardless so let's just add that right now you're gonna go to this little icon and go to track motion you see where it says 2d glow you're going to check that all right once you check that you're gonna see this like glowy shadow first i like to change the color to white you can change this to any color you want to by the way and you're gonna change the blur all the way down to zero now what you're going to do is resize the actual border so it fits nicely around your webcam Alrighty, so now i have a border around the webcam note in this video right now it is not perfect it's not perfectly sized when you edit your video make sure you get it around the webcam evenly around all sides okay just do it trust me so now that we have the webcam in place and with a border on it we can move on to cutting okay so for sony vegas if you want to split a clip all you have to press is s on your keyboard that's it for my videos the cutting takes the longest because i record for at least over an hour so usually i cut the video first some people like to cut and add their effects at the same time i don't do that i feel like it makes me take longer to edit so i like to cut the video first take a break come back and then add the effects and please while you're doing this like you should be doing this anyway with any editing software always control plus s you saw that little spinning blue circle for a second the first time you save it it'll ask you where you want to save it make sure you know exactly where you want to save the file but after that each time you press control s you'll see that little blue circle spinning around for a split second and that's it saving that's like a number one editing rule across any editing software don't forget to save your project you never know when a software can crash and i know vegas is known for crashing a lot my vegas doesn't crash a lot because i have some really good settings but yeah always remember guys to save after every little thing you do it goes a long way trust me so i will be right back i'm going to cut a few parts of this video and then we'll move on to the next section i have cut some of the video and i deleted the rest of it it was an hour and 44 minutes of recording i just cut that mess all the way down to 23 seconds that's that's a record right there okay let's act like i cut the recording down to 10 plus minutes just like a normal video now is when i will start to add the effects usually i like to add another track for my text layer and I also add another track just in case I want to add a meme. Just add more tracks with whatever you may need. You can also do the same thing with audio tracks. You can add another audio track for the music track. So out of the effects, I usually add the music first. Just find wherever your music is on your computer. I have a whole folder called use in every video. Got a folder for memes. I got a folder for music. Also a little shout out to Merked because he provided me with most of these memes and music when I was editing for him. I've added a lot more music and memes since then, but I still appreciate that he did that to begin with. All right, so I dragged the music in. I don't need the video portion of it though, so I'll just press U and delete it. Also forgot to mention, if you want to group a track together, all you have to do is click on one track, hold shift, click on another track, and then press G on your keyboard, and it'll group them together. Now that I've added the music in, here's something that 
that you should always do when you add in music, when you add in memes with like loud volume, make sure you turn the volume down, please. As a viewer, we do not want our eardrums busted, so please just be considerate and turn down the volume to however low you think it should be lowered. I usually turn it down from anywhere between negative 16 to negative 32, depending on some songs. And negative 32 is the lowest you can go before it is muted. You don't always have to use this slider either. You can also use this slider over here, which will affect the volume of the entire track. All right, good sir, Jalen. He likes to go by Frost, but as you just heard me say, his name is indeed Jalen. So now that we got the music out of the way, we can now mess with some text if you want to. I'll add a text right here where I say his name Frost. Also, if you want to add a marker, press M on your keyboard and then press enter. And then if you want a different marker, you can just press C and press enter if you want like a, a blue marker i don't know i do use both of them if i know i have an important part in a video i'll usually use c but for normal markers especially if like making an edit for those of you who like to make actual edits in sony vegas just press m on your keyboard now what i will do is i'll go to media generators i'll go all the way down to legacy text you can use the normal title and text, but legacy text will let you use any font that you download on your computer. So I'll drag this down here. Now I got sample text popping up with the Arial font. I'll delete that. I'll choose my font. Then I will type in his name. All right, so now that we have that typed out, you could just leave it at that, but if you see in my videos, I usually have an outline or a drop shadow or I'll change the color of the text. So we're gonna go to properties and let's change this to a yellow. Adding an outline to my text, I go to effects. I'll choose the color because once I do that, it automatically checks the outline box. I'll make the outline white and I'll take the feather all the way down. So now that I'm looking at this, it looks kind of ugly because the color is yellow. But you can also put a drop shadow and it doesn't look too bad. But now that I'm looking at it, I'm just gonna change the color. I think this blue looks a little better. If you need to, you can also just change the width but 0.100 there we go now you can really see the outline and don't forget what i said earlier even with tracks that you have text on it you have to go to properties and disable resample this you got to do it for all new tracks so now let's see how this looks he likes to go by frost but at and of course, if you don't want to keep it on the screen for that long, I'll wait until the word finishes as I'm saying it, and then I'll cut it off. By Frost, but as you... And there you have it. Also, if you notice that your footage is laggy, it could be your PC. And if you need to lower the preview quality, just come up here and change this to best auto or preview auto if you need to. Just don't forget to change it back to full before you start rendering. All right, so how I do my zoom ins. Okay, so all you have to do here is just reset the numbers to how it was before we made a border and resized it, which you will change this number back to 960, and then you'll change this number back to 540. Boom, now we're at full screen. Okay, so when I say I was born first, I'm going to cut it here again. So it's like basically a new layer. You see these little markers here, they're keyframes. I'm going to zoom in with my scroll wheel. I'll go over five frames. I'll click this button right here to make a separate keyframe, and then I'll zoom in. Now, when we go out and preview that, it'll look like this. I'm the better one because I was born first. All right, and now we have the zoom effect. That's how I make my zoom effects in my videos. Now on to the actual effects. Before we like get into certain effects, I want to let you all know I do have plugins. I have BCC plugins. I have magic bullet looks and I also have Sapphire plugins. This is basically the magic to how I make a lot of effects on Sony Vegas, so you're going to need these plugins. Let's go on to the shake effect. I usually use that in my video. It's at default right now. I have some presets. If you want to use these, I'll go ahead and pause the video and copy these down. I have one for an aggressive shake, and then I also have one for a smooth shake, which I use a lot. I'll show you how both of those look. I'm also gonna bump down my preview quality to auto because once I start adding actual effects, then that's when it starts to get laggy if I'm in full preview. I was born first. 
you can you can see how it, it's like a really smooth you can mess around with the amplitude that makes it to where how large the shake is and the frequency is how fast the shake goes and for the aggressive shake i've used this in situations where i'm screaming or someone else is screaming you can use it for anything else if you want to though i was born first yeah it looks kind of crazy but just use that in the right situations now let's say i want to add a funny meme like after this part right here go ahead and say it you're gonna die first i just want a funny video to pop up right after he says that first <laughs> okay this goes for everybody if you want to add a meme and include that video along with it make sure you cut out the music for however long that meme is playing you don't want to hear the music playing in the background while that meme is playing make sure the meme is appropriate for that part of the video don't just throw in memes just because it won't really make sense and then your viewers will be confused all right so i chose my meme it was that one jontron meme where he screams what but remember i dragged a new clip in so we're gonna right click go to properties disable resample never forget that if you don't remember anything else from this video using sony vegas always remember to disable resample and to control s save your project while you're editing make sure if it's a screaming meme or a pretty loud meme lower your volume accordingly and also i'm gonna drag the main footage back so that we're finished with the meme now let's see how it looks go ahead and say it you're gonna die first what? Uh, and now that I think of it, I'm also going to cut out the music when Jalen says you're going to die first because it's like a funny part of the video. Be sure to do that in your videos as well. If you know, like someone says something very funny or crazy, you don't have to do it every time, but sometimes you can cut out the music and it just makes the effect that much better. Go ahead and say it. Go ahead and say it. You're going to die first. What? And also when he says that, that could be another part of the video where you subtitle it if you want to. I'm not going to, just giving you all some ideas for your own videos. Also, you'll see a lot of times I'll just cut out the webcam and I'll just show the gameplay for a second because I'm focusing on a moment in the gameplay. I'll just cut that out, use the pan and crop tool, zoom in on my avatar really quick. No. And see how it's kind of like holding a note? You can also use that to zoom in on your character the whole time while you're doing that noise that's all i know and just like that i'm also gonna cut the music out for this part uh sometimes i like to add an audio effect y'all hear it sound like an echo or something the effect i use is reverb i'll double click on it press ok and then my preset is literally called echo if you want to copy this go ahead you're welcome so now let's see how this sounds I look more swaggy than you though, that's all I know. Uh... Y'all heard that? Y'all kinda heard it. Let me drag out the audio really quick so y'all can really hear the effect. Than you though, that's all I know. Uh... And there we go. And I didn't add it while I was making the video, but while I'm cutting, just the cutting part, that's usually when I add my outro as well because I know it's at the very end of the video. Just drag it in and then make sure you disable resample. And after I know that I've added every effect, I do a double check. I make sure everything is good. I make sure I didn't misspell something on a text because I'm letting y'all know right now I've done it before and I had to re-render a whole video just for one word being misspelled. I like to make my videos pretty much spotless. So when I see a minor mistake after I rendered it, I'll re-render a whole new copy. I don't care. Shoot. I'm trying to give y'all the best quality. I'm not settling for anything less. So say I double checked everything. I'm ready to render. I'll click and drag at the very end. I'll drag it all the way to the beginning to make sure every part of the video is included. I'll go over to file, render as, and I have some really cool render settings as well. But when you're here, for those of you who don't have render settings already, I would suggest if you have an NVIDIA graphics card that you render with the NVIDIA graphics card. If you don't, then you can just choose the normal 1080p 59.94 if your video is 60 frames and then 29.97 if your video is 30 frames. Make sure you choose where you want it to render, how to edit a video if you want to rename it, and then press render that's all you got to do and y'all that's pretty much how i edit my videos i hope you all enjoyed i hope you all learned something new let this be like my first sony vegas tutorial and if y'all want any more for sony vegas just let me know in the comments and i will be sure to make that for you all again thank you for watching the video if you did enjoy please be sure to leave a like comment and subscribe for more and i'll see you all for the next video peace